Okay, so we're moving on. The next panel is Estonia, gateway to European market through e-residency and startup Estonia. And the partner of the discussion is Estonian e-residency. I understand it's your name and it's written. Yes. <laughs> so we will just call you e-residency. Nice. Yes. And let me introduce the, the experts. So moderator, Katrin Vaga, head of PR of e-residency program. This is where you clap. Clap, clap, clap. Marika True, head of Startup Estonia. Alexey Varankov, head of Markets of Estonia's e-residency program. Anastasia Maros, co-founder of the Pikio app. And Olga Bortniko, head of utravel.me. No, this doesn't work. You really need to clap. You really need to clap. And allow yourself to smile. Okay, if you're ready. Okay, I will uh, do a short introduction. It's a great pleasure and great honor to be here in Moscow, here in GoTech. Um, I'm the head of PR in e-residency program, and for those of you who haven't heard about it, it's a Estonian government program that empowers um, entrepreneurs all over the world to establish and also run their uh, companies remotely online. And uh, as it was already introduced, I'm here with my colleagues. I tell you a very brief uh, experience. Um, this is my second time in Moscow. My first time uh, in this uh, fantastic, vibrant city was uh, about 20 years ago. I came here as a young film student and I really enjoyed my trip. I went to see a lot of theater plays and uh, immersed myself in the culture. However, crossing border for me back then was an absolute nightmare. We were searched even though we had a visa and it was a very, very lengthy procedure. And I think it's kind of symbolic that we are here today uh, with two Estonian programs, Startup Estonia and e-residency, to tell you that um, all of you who are ambitious and also hardworking uh, startup founders, that uh, obviously we can't do anything about the geographical borders and perhaps also political borders, but um, doing business nowadays is and can be borderless. And um, this is what we are going to talk about here today. So um, Estonia, 20 years in 20 years, Estonia has become the only um, country in the world that is almost um, entirely a digital society. And to just uh, to have a little bit of a taster of what it really means, um, I would uh, ask uh, Marika to, to explain uh, her own experience as an Estonian. How does she go about uh, with her everyday life? What are the digital features that she uses? She can't do manually anymore. She doesn't remember how. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, and yes, this is true that uh, Estonians, we are spoilt in the sense that we don't even imagine how are the things done without online and these services anymore. These are just so logical for us in, in, in daily life. But just a couple of examples maybe, uh, just by um, do going to your personal doctor and asking for medical prescriptions, what I just needed to do, for example, yesterday, then you can avoid going to your personal doctor because they already know what medical prescriptions they would need to give you, and you just go to the pharmacy with your ID card, you show your ID code, and then they know what to give you. So it all runs smoothly online through our X road opportunities, of course. Um, and then uh, filing taxes, maybe another example what we need to do uh, every person uh, every year. Uh, in Estonia it is as simple as five minutes because it's uh, our tax, uh, tax and customs board already filed the taxes for you. You just need to actually push yes, confirm, this is the right amount which should go off. So you actually just control if uh, you check over if everything is correct. If it is, if it is, then you confirm. Five minutes and done. Your yearly tax is filed. 
Uh, and then I promised to also uh, bring an example of uh, online voting. Uh, so we do uh, the i-voting in Estonia, which uh, already around half of the people are using. Of course, you can still go and queue at the physical uh, voting uh, places around the city, but who would want to queue if there is an opportunity to just open your laptop and do the i-voting? So for I just checked before the panel discussion for that for the past three times now for either parlia European Parliament elections, local municipality elections or the national ones, I've been I voting and again, couple of minutes and you're done. Of course, if you know who you want to elect. If you don't, then you need to st start browsing and looking in, but I already knew my choice, so it was only a couple of minutes to do, this, uh, uh, do the elections. Thank you, Marika. I will just uh, quickly ask also the input from my uh, good colleague, Alexei, who has been working for e-residency program remotely from Ukraine for three years. So you have been traveling a lot back and forth. What are the things that you notice that could be different in your country and that are kind of a bonuses in, in Estonia? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, f from my observations, I am really fascinated how the uh, like electronic services are the part of daily life in Estonia. But my favorite story is about the fishermen in Estonia. So in Estonia, to go fishing, you need a license. So, and this guy, he went fishing without the license. And while he was fishing, he heard the boats of fish inspection coming. So he went to his smartphone and obtained this fishing uh, license just in a couple of minutes before they came. So he was OK with that. This is how fascinating it is. I didn't know this story. This is really cool. I think it's a kind of a funny, funny way to see that you can actually, you know, accommodate to different uh, problematic situations also by using things online. Um, so we are happy to, to have here two startup founders, Anastasia and also Olga. Uh, they have both um, created companies using e-residency card and they are e-residents, uh, I think, approximately for a year, both of you. So tell us, what, what was your um, uh, consideration? Uh, why did you pick up Estonia as a starting uh, point for, your, for establishing your company? Uh, Olga. Oh, thank you. Um, we have a marketplace of uh, multi-day adventure tours. Uh, so we have clients all over the world. And uh, we, um, uh, we have a problem if we have a border of uh, our payments. And if you know that uh, in Russia, when um, you, need to give, uh, you need to get three days secure on your card. And uh, if you don't, you can't can't pay so we need we uh, have a plan to go global we have uh, we need to uh, get payments from all of the world so we uh, oh, so we start our company in and we launched in Russia last year in June and uh, some symbolic like I said uh, we start our we get our residency in uh, uh, we start in November, last November, and we get it in uh, this April. So we really uh, grow faster, and we g we have m much more clients uh, since this uh, day. Uh, like we have um, um, this uh, Estonian company and Estonian financial uh, organ um, financial organization, like P Pioneer. Um, so we uh, really uh, get grow faster and we plan to go to uh, global right now, more um, effi efficiency. Effective. Was it the only choice that you considered or did you also consider the other countries for, uh, for establishing a company? Uh, it's really good question because uh, um, it was a really funny stories because I have uh, my friends uh, and uh, we uh, met last time in five years ago and it's just we go to the streets and I said oh nice to hello N how are you doing and uh, etc and I said oh I have um, plan to uh, I have company and I need a company in uh, Europe if you know some somebody who can help me and she said 
uh, yeah, I know, I know the Kirill, and uh, um, she get uh, the contact of Kirill. I never knew about this ecosystem in Europe and startups ecosystem infrastructure and nothing. And uh, Kirill said to me, oh, it's no problem, I, I will help you. And so it was for me just uh, um, only choice to go to Estonia because it's really easy and uh, fast and without coming to the country and uh, a lot of a lot of pluses, just pluses, <laughs> you know. Okay, this is really happy to, good to hear. Kirill is one of the e-residents. Kirill Solovyov is uh, very active here in, in Moscow, and uh, I suppose that she's, he's working a little bit like a salesman. Anastasia, what was your consideration uh, back then, about uh, a year ago, when you established our company? Um, so why we chose Estonia? The first were, um, the process of establishing a company was very simple and very fast. Uh, me and my co-founder met in Starbucks for coffee, and between coffee and talks, we registered our company. So it was like a super easy process. Um, what else? Estonia is the closest European country to Russia, so and if you need to do something in the place, you can easily get there and cheap get there, so you can just buy um, tickets for train. Um, also, uh, I've been to European startup events and investors, uh, almost every investor actually, asked me uh, uh, where my company is registered and I was happy to have the right answer that my company is already registered in Europe and that was okay for them. Um, yeah, and actually uh, startup ecosystem is also really a great point to establish a company exactly in Estonia. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, Marika, uh, you have uh, probably investigated a little bit more in behalf of uh, Startup Estonia. What does actually um, the startup founder need? What are the, the let's say, like three basic needs uh, that he or she relies on uh, before uh, choosing where to establish a company and how to do it? Uh, so, first of all, Startup Estonia, uh, just briefly, is also uh, an Estonian governmental program. And we help to develop and uh, see, oversee that uh, our ecosystem is growing and uh, that the entrepreneurs have their needed, uh, needed benefits or their needed things, what, uh, what they would need uh, in Estonia. And, um, of course, we've looked into this. Um, we've actually even uh, conducted a thorough uh, research uh, with people who have moved to Estonia or are doing business with us. And uh, mainly what they say is the easiness of access, not only uh, to the actual registering your company, for example, like we are just hearing through e-residency, but also easiness of access to the country itself, that we are we are quite open, um, I would even say very open, especially to our neighboring countries where we have the similar cultural and historical background. Also, if we talk about the Russian, uh, Russian here, then uh, the Russian language itself is very widely spoken in Estonia. So if you come to the community, there is no language barrier either. And of course, English is spoken very widely as well. And, uh, but I would bring out that uh, every startup, when you start growing, you need main basic things for your quick growth. And this is the transparency, transparency and good business environment, so that it would be less bureaucracy. Then second, of course, you need funding if you are in search of funding and that it would be close to you. So we have VCs uh, available and enough money. We actually have a slight... Uh, positive problem that we have more money available in the region than deal flow. So we are constantly in search of good, uh, good startups to come over to our way. And then third, but not least, is that uh, startups need uh, good advice and mentoring. So we do have this giving back mentality in the community. Estonia has been giving uh, birth to four unicorns already, and those guys are happy to help the new startups uh, to get their success path on their way as well. Um, I guess that, that is the basic things, yeah. For those of you uh, who don't know uh, what these uh, four unicorns are, obviously Skype that you might have heard of, uh, TransferWise, Bolt, uh, that I heard that 
you also now have here, and also Playtech. Um, these are four, and I think there are really a long list of the ones uh, growing really rapidly right now. Um, so uh, one of the projects that Startup Estonia has been uh, promoting a lot, and that is kind of a natural continuation in terms of the, the customer journey uh, for e-residency, is a startup visa. Um, can you explain a little bit, uh, perhaps before we talk about the startup visa, how does this uh, journey usually start, Alexei? So um, what does it, uh, how does usually uh, these, all these um, Russian companies that have been established uh, in Estonia through e-residency, how they kind of grow and find their way into the ecosystem. Um, thank you. Uh, so usually the entrepreneurs who sell their products and services to the European market or global market or to North America, they look for some kind of gateway to this market. And uh, in, in this case, they find Estonia as a very good solution because in Estonia they can establish their company absolutely remotely without the need to travel to Tallinn uh, to visit notary physically or to visit a bank, which saves uh, time and uh, reduces their cost a lot. And uh, once they uh, established uh, their business and they start selling, at some point they uh, want to discover more about Estonia and they uh, go to Tallinn as a tourist to see the city and find out like what is it Estonia and at, at this point some of them they, they can take a decision like how cool it would be to move my team there and uh, grow my startup there from this time and here is uh, the point where the startup visa uh, comes right what is Startup Visa all about and what is, uh, what is the amount of uh, the companies and, and uh, um, startup founders who have actually contacted you and, and got the Startup Visa? Mm, so if e-residency can be your good virtual access into Estonian business environment without actually physically coming to Estonia at all, like these girls are telling you here, then, uh, then Startup Visa is for those who want also physical access. Um, and it actually gives you a D visa, which is appropriate for the whole Schengen area. So that's if you're a startup and you're growing and you're looking for your way into European markets, then of course you want your physical access, but then you would want to move freely around as well. So Estonian startup visa gives you that opportunity. But besides of that, it, it of course gives you the great community as well. So that what we see is that people come for the Estonian startup ecosystem is that we are s small but vibrant and we do have this uh, great know-how and success stories to follow who, who you would want to get advice from. Anastasia and Olga, how have you uh, planned your next steps? So, first of all, you became e residents, then you established your companies. I understand you are doing uh, both really good. What next? What are the next steps? So, yesterday we applied for startup visas, Estonian, so fingers crossed. Uh, I hope we will get it. Uh, How was this process for you? It was really uh, simple. You just need to uh, answer the questions you usually ask when you talk to investor. So about your market, your uh, customers, about your future plans, traction, and so on. Um, and I love the thing that uh, the requirements to Estonian startup visa is really clear, uh, like a list of them and. Uh, even uh, they set an amount of money you should have on your bank account to get it. And uh, in comparison to other uh, countries, especially Baltic countries, uh, your company uh, doesn't have to be funded uh, for applying to be, uh, for visa. Yeah, so it's really easy. And I know it takes maybe an hour just to fill in the form online and that's it, mm -hmm. and sent. Admit, su submit, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Olga. Yeah, we didn't apply it, uh, for Estonia visa yet. <laughs> uh, we plan it to do. We, uh, I knew about this opportunity just, uh, I think, in, on last week. Uh, so we, ha we have a plan, like I said, uh, to go global, to go to American and European market. And uh, it's uh, the trust... 
client trusts you if you have a company in Europe and uh, it's really easier to get to the um, uh, uh, American and Europe client when you uh, sitting in uh, Europe and talking with them on their language. So uh, we uh, really seriously think about uh, this opportunity with Estonia Visa and um, I think I will just type you <laughs> in next week on this week about this uh, opportunity and yeah, we want to get it. So obviously the, the key to success uh, regarding to startups is, is really raising funds. Uh, can you just uh, have a quick overview, Marika, what, uh, what does it include and uh, what one should be prepared on uh, if, you know, belonging to the ecosystem in Estonia? Mm -hmm. So one thing what I maybe uh, didn't mention is that uh, Russia uh, is definitely one of the top uh, countries for talent for Estonia right now. Both employees are coming uh, to work in startups to get their experience, but also the startup founders themselves. And ex exactly for the same reason is that either they would want their next round of investments, uh, their uh, they're in search of partnerships in Europe, or they just want to uh, establish their company physically also in Estonia to then start and taking uh, next markets in the European Union. So, but of course, scaling to global markets then is the next step as well, but Europe is their target number one. But uh, then, uh, Clo closeness to VCs, I think, and the easiness is, of course, similar uh, to all of the rest of the ecosystems in the world. Just the fact that we have a very uh, small ecosystem uh, is, is the thing that while you're sitting around in the conferences or the meetups, you actually meet the investors. Uh, you can just go close to them and start pitching your idea or set up meetings. And then, of course, as I said uh, before, is that... Uh, we are uh, in need of uh, great talented startups because the region has uh, investment opportunities and uh, and uh, I was just even uh, looking at the numbers that we have more than 1 billion to invest into but it's the overall region uh, the Nordics and the Baltics together most of the VCs are looking at the region uh, in all mm -hmm. okay um, Alexei, uh, you have been entrepreneur yourself, so if you would, uh, you know, if there are those people in, in the audience who doesn't have an exact clue about how to apply for e-residency, how would you go about it? How would you instruct them and, and uh, describe this, uh, this journey? Um, I, I think from my experience, it's very important to be focused on what you're doing. And it's uh, quite complicated nowadays because so many things are trying to distract you from your uh, personal goals. Uh, so that, that, that's my advice, like ma maintain your focus. And uh, uh, it's also uh, one like plus uh, for your residency because it's kind of hassle-free and you won't spend a lot of time on running and establishing your company and you can put this time to be focused on your goal. Can you describe the process a little bit as well? Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, um, if, uh, how to establish a company in Estonia remotely, like without the need to travel to Estonia? First of all, you need to get an e-residency card, uh, and the cost of the card is 100 euro, and you can apply online uh, on the residency.gov.e website. And uh, then you need to pick up your card in the Estonian embassy here in Moscow or other city. <clears throat> and uh, once you got the card, uh, then you can sign documents digitally and then you need to find a service provider. And we have a marketplace of service providers serving e-residency. And uh, you need to find a company that will register your legal entity in Estonia. Uh, they will find out all your needs, and based on that, they will prepare all the needed documents. You will sign them digitally, and they will register your company. And the cost of company registration in Estonia is 190 euros. And once you got a company, you need a legal address for that. And uh, this is also provided by 
service providers and the cost for legal address is around 100 euro per year. And once everything is established, the next step is bank account. And here you have two options. Uh, the one is go for classical bank in Estonia, which still requires a physical presence at the bank. And the other one is the fintech providers uh, that work closely with e-residencies, such companies as uh, Pioneer, Paysera, TransferWise, Holvi. And these companies can open a corporate account for your Estonian company uh, absolutely online without the need of traveling. Somewhere. How do you, um, uh, what kind of value do the service providers add to your businesses, uh, Anastasia and Olga? We uh, briefly spoke about it before. It was, uh, it was interesting for me to hear which service providers, for example, that uh, you use and uh, what are the, their prices uh, like and, and what is the service like because we have over 30 uh, service providers listed in our webpage and, uh, and many of them actually work in different, different countries and offer different services uh, well we use uh, uh, Nordic consulting for uh, local representative service and for legal letters in Estonia and we contact in only online with them and pay only 125 euros annually so that's it and for the bank account we use Holvi which is uh, Finnish fintech service service and the cost is around 11 euros uh, monthly. That's it. So I understand for you it's quite a cost-effective way of, uh, yeah, of running the cheap, business, yeah. especially at the mm -hmm. beginning, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Olga? Uh, we use uh, just legal address, accounting, and uh, this Pioneer is our partner. Uh, and uh, for Pioneer, we are partner because we uh, uh, get to Pioneer all our uh, travel experts. <laughs> so we uh, we pay, like um, Anastasia said, the same uh, price for um, legal address. And uh, for Pioneer, we don't pay. We just have a commission from our transactions. So it's for us, it's very good, good working. Okay, well, uh, thanks a lot for uh, discussing that and thanks for you for listening. I think we have like a few minutes, so if there is anybody who wants to ask anything, I think you can uh, just uh, let us know. No questions? Here's a question. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hi, my name is Konstantin. Um, I I will ask about e-residence. Um, what kind of benefits do you have? Uh, you have uh, only one uh, company registration, right? Yes. Something more? I would, uh, I would let Alexei to reply to this question. Um, um, I, I think, yes, like mainly in the moment residence is used to establish your company in Estonia. But what else is interesting is that by having this uh, e-residency card, you get the digital ID uh, in a, uh, that works in Estonia as the like regular signature, which you can use to sign like documents in Estonia, and also you can use the residency card to do encryption of your documents. So if you and your like business partner has a residency card, then you can sign and encrypt specific documents, so it will be only opened by this person, nobody else using his uh, digital identity, which is very secure, like state level secure uh, security and encryption solution that you can apply to your needs. Yeah. We don't usually want to go into the tax too much, and obviously we didn't have enough time to explain all the specifics here in this panel, but uh, there is a small tax incentive as well for the, for, for the beginning uh, uh, companies, like small companies? Yeah, uh, so the uh, taxation system in uh, Estonia is very interesting uh, and it works in a way that in Estonia there is no corporate or income tax uh, on your company uh, until you reinvest your profits. So, for example, when Ukrainian IT entrepreneurs sell their products to European clients through the Estonian company, what they do, they invoice their clients from the Estonian company, they get uh, these invoices paid, and then they uh, 
send this money to the Ukrainian companies where the actual service is built. And for the Estonian company, it looks like the reinvestment of the prof profits and there is no uh, income tax then. And they are only like taxed in Ukraine. Um, in Estonia, there is a tax on dividends, which is 20%. So if you want to get the dividends from your company and then use this money, you have to pay 20%. Also in Estonia, there is a uh, value-added tax, which is 20%. And uh, it uh, works, uh, it, uh, appears when you sell or buy any services or products within Estonia. If you sell or buy something outside Estonia, then there is no way to in this case. Yeah, so it's kind of, there thank are you. lots of little incentives as well, yeah, perhaps. Thank you. I have uh, one more question. It's okay. Yeah. Um, how they check identity? You're told it's completely remotely, right? Yeah. So I can apply, but uh, how they check uh, I, I can, identification? I, I can hello this. So when you're applying, mm. you submit your passport details through the application form. Government but ID, I, I need to provide. Yes, mm -hmm. and then you need to come to the Estonian embassy to pick mm -hmm. up your card. And mm -hmm. this is where actual check has happened. So they will ask your ID once again. They will take your fingerprints, and that's how they will make sure that you are the person who got the card. So. Okay. Yeah, so you, okay. you give kind of uh, some extra information, extra background information uh, about you, like voluntarily. So, yeah. Biometry, fingerprint, right? Yeah, fingerprint, okay. exactly. Thank you. Okay. So, no questions? More questions? No, okay. Well, thanks a lot. And if you are more uh, curious, more interested about the either program, Startup Estonia, e-residency, come and talk to us. We have a little, little table over there. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. I'm sure that most of the questions we have are to be asked in secret. So, <laughs> okay. so yes, please ask those questions in person. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks.